Welcome back boys and girls to another video. They are few and far between but uh, I'm working on it. Today I'm going to be talking about values, checking your values while you're doing digital painting in Photoshop, and more interestingly, how to do it in other art programs as well. Uh, in the interest of saving time because I have a good deal to cover, I'm going to point you to this article at artofschools.com slash checking values that uh, pretty much is the backbone of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, it outlines some of the pitfalls of the common methods people use to check on their values while they are painting. It's worthwhile to read because uh, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today. So back in Photoshop, I'm just going to demo some of the ways people check their values. The first common way is to hit Control, Shift, and U which is the shortcut for the saturate, and we can see the result here. All the inherent values of each color are gone, it's just one gray. That is really inaccurate. The second way people like to check on their values is to add a new layer to fill it with black. I'm just gonna alt backspace and change the blend mode to color or to saturation. As you can see, you have some values here, but the range is just kind of off. You can even eyeball the actual color, color wheel, and see that the values of the colors over here are much lighter than what's over here. And over here the values are kind of all over the place, not very cohesive. Art of Schools concludes that the more accurate way to check on your values while painting is to go to View, Proof Setup, Custom, make sure Device to Simulate is set to Working Gray, dot gain 20%, and here you have a more accurate representation of the values of each color. So I'm going to demo another way that you can get this more accurate color wheel. We're just going to undo that value check. You can use what's called a color lookup table. I'm going to point you to another article at amorton.com. It's a blog post. I'll have that linked in the description. Basically, it references the same Art of Schools article and talks about the same value checking. However, he also includes another option, which is to use color lookup. And basically, the easiest way I can explain the color lookup is it's like an Instagram filter and it has color adjustment information built into one file. You can apply it in Photoshop to an image, you can apply it in Premiere for example to a video, and it does like color grading and that kind of thing in almost a one-click kind of action. So credit to this guy, uh, he provided the color lookup table file that uh, I'm gonna demo next. So back in Photoshop, gonna keep our eye on this color version over here, we're gonna come down and click color lookup and that will create a color lookup adjustment layer. Then over here we're going to click on load 3D LUT LUT, I'm not even sure, and we're going to navigate to where the file is saved, change the file type to 3DL, and here it is, grayscale 3DL. I extracted it from the zip, gonna hit load, and there we have it. We have the same, more accurate value range showing up here. That's the color lookup. To compare over here, I'm going to control Y. And we can see that it's yielding the same results. So with all that said, what are the benefits of that? Well, you can keep an eye on your values while you're painting. You can open up a duplicate of your window by going to Window, Arrange, New Window. Got your new window over here, which you can pop out. You can resize it. And then, Inhale, you can hit Control y and you can do all your painting and get your values over here in real time. Well, that's all well and good, and by now you're probably wondering, why is he showing us the old Control y to 
check your values in Photoshop trick. We've all seen it before. Well, there's more to the video, so hold your horses. What we just pointed out is that that's the old Control y to check your values in Photoshop trick, but what if you wanted to use another program like Clip Studio Paint, as I like to use, or Sketchbook Pro, or Krito, or Painto, or even Microsoft Paint, if you like suffering. We don't have a method like in Photoshop to get the accurate representation of the values in Clip Studio Paint, for example. This is where we're going to use two pieces of software. The first, OBS, which you can download from here, obsproject.com slash download. You download, you run the installer. Uh, it's a great piece of software that I recommend you look into further, but I'm going to demo it for a specific purpose in this video. The next piece of software is called On Top Replica, which you can get from here. It's basically an app that's going to take a copy of any window you select and make a duplicate that is always on top of all the other windows. So even if another window is active, you still have that in view. You scroll down to installation, latest version, you download the zip, you extract it. It's safe, I use it. I mean, if you're concerned about it, make sure your antivirus is up. Disclaimer, disclaimer. We're going to go back to Clip Studio Paint, and what we're going to do is, like in Photoshop, we're going to make a duplicate of this canvas by going Window, Canvas, New Window. We're going to pop that out and move it down and out of the way. Now we're going to go over to OBS. Uh, you can look at some tutorials for this. I'm just going to run through, and you can kind of pick up as I go along. So down here, you've got your scenes. I created a new scene. It's called Scene 3 by just clicking on this plus icon. Then over here in Sources, you're going to create a new source by clicking on the plus icon. And then you're going to hit Window Capture. You can rename it if you want. I'm just going to leave that. And then you can hit the drop down and look for that Clip Studio Paint window we had open. And here it is. So in here, you can resize. You can hold Alt and Crop. You can do whatever you want. Adjust it however you want. But now you have a capture of that same separate window we had here down out of the way in Clip Studio Paint. So it's not entirely useful all on its own, but what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that space, we're going to hit Windowed Projector, we're going to maximize that window, and then we're going to open On Top Replica. You're going to see this window, right click here to start. So right click. Select Window, OBS32, OBS32 being the name of the window open, and here we have a duplicate of that window on top. While you're here, you can right click again and click on Select Region. You get some crosshairs that you can use to crop down your area here. You can hit Done or Reset if you messed up, and something else you could do, you can select your region, then you can hit this little plus icon, and we can name it something like Demo. Then you're going to hit Return on your keyboard, you can hit Done, and you can close it, and the next time you open on Top Replica, you can right click, select the window, you go into OBS 32, and now you can just Demo, click that, and you have that crop saved as a preset. So now, you can go back to Clip Studio Paint and you have this on top replica with a duplicate of your window on top while you are actually doing your thing over here in Clip Studio Paint. But what about the values? This is all about checking your values more accurately. We're getting to that. Back in OBS now, you can right click on your window capture, click filters, click the little add icon, and apply LUT. And now you browse. Now here's the thing. OBS only accepts these PNG versions of the same color lookup information. Uh, what I did was I converted the .3DL version to a PNG version. And let me just show you how I did that. In Photoshop, I took a neutral LUT file and I put a color lookup adjustment layer I hit load 3DLUT, 3DL file, 
and it changed it to a PNG version, which I then exported. That's what OBS recognizes, and it's going to recreate the same result in OBS as a filter. So back in OBS, this is where I got Webian working gray. I'll include that in the description if you don't want to have to make it from scratch. Close, and as you can see here, now we have a grayscale version. We're going to reopen on top replica, right click to start, select window, select OBS 32, and our demo preset. And here we have grayscale on top, clip studio paint below, and we can rotate our canvas, paint, and get a live update of your values. Any art program you can capture and get the accurate value check through OBS and on top replica. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you found it useful. Like and subscribe uh, and all that good stuff. Maybe I'll come back in uh, another couple of months and upload another video. Actually, I have another video planned that uh, will actually use this same method to allow you to analyze the value ranges of photos online in real time. Just any photo you can pull up in a web browser, you can do that analysis and that should be a pretty interesting video as well. So tell your friends about me and I'll see you next time.